So the other day, I was watching the Oscars, along with 17 million other people, according to Variety. And all of a sudden, Jada Smith. Now, you've heard about all the drama that happened that night. And after the joke, I asked myself, but what is Jada's disease? So I made some researches, and here I am. So yeah, today we're talking about boldness, and by the end of the video, you'll be a sort of Jada's sensitive hair topic philosophies expert, I guess. So in order to understand each other, we have to define two words. The first is alopecia, which is basically the act of losing hair. The word comes from ancient Greek alopex, which means fox. And we have two theories. The first is that foxes shed their coat twice a year. And the second suggests that during ancient Greece, foxes used to lose their hair because of mange. However, baldness is the state of being bald, and alopecia leads to baldness. The most common hair loss affection is called hereditary androgenetic alopecia. This one's pretty tough to say. So to make it simple, stem cells, that are basically the cells you need to have in order to grow hair, are basically inactivated inside the hair follicle, and the hair follicle will degenerate, it will atrophy. The newly created hair will be so thin, so transparent, that you won't be able to see it. But there are so many other causes. Stress, nutritional deficiencies, fungus infections, burns, radiotherapy, chemotherapy that will destroy the cells with a high division rate, and guess what? Hair cells have a high division rate. Even autoimmune disorders where your own immunity cells will destroy your hair follicle. And last but not least, you may have heard this theory. It suggests that high testosterone levels, and more precisely, high dehydrotestosterone levels, would accelerate the hair cycle, causing hair follicle fatigue and the hair to be more and more thin. Now, I'm sure you noticed that usually men don't lose their side hair. And we think that's because this side hair doesn't have dehydrotestosterone receptors. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. So we're talking about hair cycle since the beginning, but what is hair cycle? It can be divided in three phases that last between two to eight years. The anagen phase allows the hair to grow. The catagen phase is a transition phase during which the hair will detach from the hair follicle. And the telogen phase allows the hair follicle to rest. The exogen phase is basically the final shedding. It leads to a new hair cycle, but doesn't belong to the hair cycle. When you experience a very, very intense stress, up to 70% of your hair can enter the telogen phase and begin to fall. We call this telogen effluvium. I don't know if you realize, but alopecia, by the age of 50, affects one of every two men and one of every four women. And what's funny is that we still know very little about it. I always like to look for the body's part symbolism, and for the hair, it's very interesting. I think it's easy to guess that hair symbolizes femininity, but it also symbolizes creativity, beauty, vitality, power, freedom, and even intuition. In the Old Testament, Samson would lose his power and energy when his hair was cut, and Amerindians would have long hair in order to communicate with the spirit world. All right, no fancy advices for today. Just keep taking care of yourself and follow your needs. As our friend Jada once said, Alopecia and I are going to be friends, period. Just wanted to add a quote because, because it looks cool, I guess. If you like body related stuff, you can visit my Instagram page or click on this video. Thanks for watching till the end. See you soon. Bye. Oh, I beat myself. <laughs> Bum 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 bum